Hi y'all, it's Mary with Stamps and Lingers and it is Saturday night, which means it is time for a video tutorial on Facebook. Give me one second to just double check that I am transmittalating by looking over here to the left. Yeah, looks like I'm on and that's a very good sign. Hopefully soon I'll be able to start seeing comments as folks come in. Uh, I'm not sure somebody leave there we go hey Rosie okay so they are actually scrolling hi Debbie appreciate you joining alrighty hey Amy well we just uh, had the little afternoon rain shower come through you can tell it was the rain shower time because it was time to go out and feed the horses and walk the dog and all of those other things hi Daryl hi Terry hi Pam and Barbara and Linda appreciate you joining hey Debbie Alrighty, so this is the card I gave you the sneak peek of this morning. I suspect several of you at least figured this out. Hey, Karen and Janie, appreciate you coming. Rosemary and Jennifer, thank you. Hi, Faith. Alrighty, I'm even showing up in California. Very good sign. Hi, Jerry. So this is the card. It uses the Forever Grapevine bundle. And that has this wonderful die set called, um, you know, originally Grapevine. And it's only six dies, but it gives you a lot of um, fun foliage to add to your project. So that's kind of cool. And then, of course, I have the tried and true brick and mortar 3D embossing folder, one of my favorites. All right, so I'm going to tell you straight up front, just get ready to settle down, get a cup of coffee, and do some die cutting if you decide to make this card. The only thing difficult about this card is just the time consumingness of cutting the die cuts. Everything else is easy peasy. So let me prove that to you right now. Uh, all of these card cuts will be on tomorrow's blog, so no need to worry. The first thing I'm gonna do is take a piece of cardstock. It's crumb cake cardstock, and this is gonna be for my card front. And I'm going to put it in my Stamparatus, or Stampopotamus, if you know me at all. And I am going to ink the vine design from Forever Grapevine with for uh, early espresso. Hey, Karen. Thank you, Debbie. Hey, Claire. I'm inking it in early espresso. And we're going to stamp the card front with that. And I'd like it a little darker, so yay for the Stampopotamus. I can just ink again and go right back over the top. Now, I'm not gonna get too head up because a lot of this image is covered by the die cuts that we're gonna do. So I'm not gonna worry over much about a couple of little places being opened up. So now I'm gonna do a little coloring. Now, the first time I did this, I went all crazy and I colored all of the vine. No need, do not do that. I mean, you can if you want, if you just love to color, go for it. But you really don't need to. So what I did is I used my dark polished pink and dark fresh freesia Stampin' Blends, and I'm gonna use the bullet side. And I am just coloring some of each of the grapes in these clusters with each of these colors. So these are going to be, this is obviously a red wine grape, obviously, because, you know, it's gonna be like purple and pink and stuff. So surely that means, I'm not a wine drinker, so if I say something totally not correct in the wine department, you will know why. I just I'm sorry for those of you who love wine. I think it tastes like cough syrup. Okay, just I'm just saying it out there. I'm, I'm there and if I see people start to drop off, I'll know that I have offended the wine aficionados of the group. But yeah, I'm, I'm not a wine person. Give me a margarita or a pina colada and a walk on the beach and showers in the moonlight or wait, something like that. Yeah. Actually, walks on the beach, I do like, it turns out. I really do like them. Especially if there's pavement and I don't have to get sand in my toes. Okay, so I've just colored the grapes. And then I'm going to color just the leaves. Hey, Joan. Yes, that's true. And for the leaves, I'm going to use the um, soft succulent. I'm using light soft succulent and light... Um, uh, evening evergreen and I'm just going to color these now when you're using the crumb cake even with this early espresso I did notice it tends to bleed a little bit so your first time through just push the color just not quite to the edge again because this this is a really forgiving coloring card if you will because 
everything gets covered so much, but it's always good to practice safe coloring techniques. So if you just keep the color away from the edge for a second, and then when you go back, you'll be able to see if it has bled out enough. And if it hasn't, then you can just kind of fix it with the, with the other end of your, your uh, blend. Okay, so that was my handy how to do Stampin' Blends for beginners and experienced blender peoples alike tip of the day. Okay, see how you can see it? It's, it's bleeding. It's definitely bleeding. So I'm going to leave it for a second. And then, there you go, Terry. See, it's not just me. It is not just me. Okay, and Pam. Good. All right, and then I'm just going to take a little bit of the evening evergreen and give it a little bit of a touch at the top. And you could you could certainly skip this step if, if you didn't want to do it. But, you know, again, it's fun to add just a little bit of color sometimes, right? And that's really all the coloring you need to do because we're going to use a gorgeous, gorgeous die cut. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this through the uh, cutting machine and I'm going to do it in the 3D embossing folder called Brick and Mortar. And I'm going to place it in here. Now remember, when you're using a 3D folder, what you want to do is use the number one platform, place your folder in on the platform with the um, crease, the folded edge, going into your cutter, and then use the number four specialty plate, okay? And that will be the parfait sandwich. Not a parfait sandwich, but a perfect sandwich to emboss your card frame. All right. And what we end up with is a lovely brick wall. She's a brick wall. No, I think that's wrong. Now I'm going to take some pale papaya and my blending brush and starting off of the cardstock, I'm going to blend just in the corner. Now you might normally see this done with crumb cake ink, but I liked how it was kind of a brighter vintageizing. If that did that even make sense? I mean, can vintaging be brighter? I think it can because I just did it. So I'm just doing these two opposite corners kind of deep into the card base, into the card front. And then just a little bit over here. Not much. It's just adding a little bit of extra something something. You know what I'm saying? Alrighty. It could be the wine talking. There you go. All right, so I'll put this away. And I'm going to hide that just a second. Now, I have done I have done a lot of cutting, okay? Because I didn't want you to sit here while I cut. So, let me tell you, let me inventory our cuts. I have used this is these are all made with the 2021 2023 in color shimmer vellum, which is wondrous. I love it. It's possibly one of my favorite things of all time. So I've taken the early evergreen and I have cut two of the large, um, you know, the doohickeys, the peoples, the doohickeys. All right. And it appears that I have cut them both upside down and that's fine. We're going to do it. Let, let me show you how I know they're upside down. It's, I'm, it's upside down because I'm live. Can you see how rounded the edges of the cuts are? That's the front, and this is the non-shimmer side. If you look at the other side, you'll see that it is a very, it's flat. You can definitely tell the difference between the front and the back, okay? And that's gonna become important here in just a second. But for this card, I'm gonna go ahead and, well, yeah. You know what, I'm gonna have to cut another one, you guys, because I can't stand it. I just can't stand it, it has to be cut fixed. And I'm gonna have to fix the orientation anyway, okay. So what I'm going to do is I also cut some soft succulent leaves, soft succulent leaves. And let me tell you what I did here. Remember that little discussion I just gave you about the front and the back? The leaves die, when you run it through, you get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight leaves. So I did it twice through. And what I did is I did it the first time with my uh with the shimmer side up hang on a sec i'm going to show you this and i'll pull out my other piece of paper at the same time 
because you know how efficient I am. See, I was trying to be all efficient and stuff, but I didn't do a very, didn't do a very good job of efficiency. Okay, so let me pull this out and set it behind me so that I can cut my big die here in just a second. All right, so what I did for leaves, I ran it through twice with the leaves in place, okay? So the first time I cut it with the shimmer side up, which makes the shimmery side the right side. And then I ran, I flipped it over and I ran it through again with the shimmer side down. So what that's doing is it's giving me essentially two different kinds of leaves. One a little bit darker and richer and shinier and another with a flat texture. And so basically that's giving me two tones of um, soft succulent on my card with just one kind of paper. Okay, so I've got all of those leaves, a whole bunch of different ones. And then I cut a bunch of the tendrils. Now there are two little tendril dies. See why I said the hardest part of this card is just cutting. Just straight up cutting. And that isn't hard, it's just a little time consuming, right? So you can do it. But these are the tendrils and I basically cut six of each of them. So I ran it through three times, both of them through three times with um, polished pink, pale papaya, and fresh freesia. Okay, so we're gonna have a very colorful and yet vintageized card. So let me go ahead right quick and do this die cut over here, just because I really want it to be right. I want it to be right, because I can't stand it when it's wrong. You know that thing about if, if die cutting is wrong, I don't wanna be right? Well, I wanna be right. I'm just, I'm straight up about that. I want to be right. So I'm going to make sure I'm doing shimmer side up and I'm just going to run it through. It's kind of a detailed die, so you may want to run through back and forth a couple, three times just to be sure to get a good cut. But you are also certainly welcome to not do that and then you can uh, kind of play with the die a little bit. I prefer an easy cut and so I did it a couple of times. All right. And here we go. All right. So I'll poke out the little hanging chads with my tweezers. And then I'm going to punch it out. Ah, Karen has a question about sending floating hearts. Good one. Heck, even I don't know how to do that. All I know how to do is a regular heart, and I don't think it floats. Or maybe it does. I don't know. Maybe regular hearts just float. That's a possibility, certainly. All right, I've got all the little hanging chad doohickeys out. I think. Close enough. And then I'll poke out the die. Cut. All right, there's plenty of little relief holes. That's what those are called. Did you know that? Relief holes. It's like a relief pitcher only completely unrelated to baseball in any way, shape, or form. Okay, so here we go. Now, this will be a really good comparison for you to see. So this is, in my world, cut correctly. You can see that the shimmer's on the top, and you can see that the, that the cuts are rounded inwards on this side. On the other one, you can see that the shimmer side, the cuts are kind of flat slash rounded up. Okay, so that's really the difference. If, and, and for this card, would it have really mattered? Probably not, but I wanted it to be right. Hey, Sherry, appreciate you joining. And Kim, thank you. Your daughter ran a half marathon in Seattle. They moved the start time up and she said even then it was a, I know it's been crazy. Okay, disclaimer, these are not stamping up mini glue dots, okay? The reason for that is last night at about seven, I realized I was out of glue dots, so I went looking for my spare box of glue dots, and I think what I just ran out of was my spare box of glue dots. So somehow I managed to get myself in a glue dot deficit, and that is not acceptable. So I went out today and I bought some glue dots. They're not, they're not ours, but they will dot in a glue-like manner, I'm certain. Okay, maybe. We'll see. We're going to see. We may see that we know exactly why... Stampin' Up! is so great. Okay, so I'm just going to use, like, three, okay? And I'm going to put one in the bottom-most leaf, 
one in the middle leaf right there and one in the other endish leaf okay and then we'll just lay it over the top of this stamped image perfection is not required it's a grapevine hello okay done okay now get ready for no not as bad as a, def a dimensional deficit that is not acceptable okay so now i'm just going to start glue dotting my um, leaves so i'm going to do a bunch of them where i can um i'm just going to kind of start putting them out so that i can see what i got and i'll put glue dots on the back and then just kind of go for it Okay, that's a back, that's a back, that's a back, that's a back, yep. And you can see what I'm doing is I'm gonna end up with some leaves that are shiny and pretty, and some leaves that are a little flat, which is also good because it's a good contrast, okay? And contrast on your cards is always a good thing, always. It gives contrast, it gives texture. So what's really fun about this is that you get all these different leaves, all different sizes with just one die. So that's kind of handy. So then I'm just gonna start putting some glue dots on them and then I'll stick them on, kind of random. It's not very, it's not very scientific, okay? Some are gonna be shiny shiny and new okay i won't sing i promise i won't sing so finney had a big day at the farmer's market although there was a lady who told me that i was apparently training him wrong because when she went to let her dog come up to him and sniff him i backed him away and said oh Come here, Finny. And she said, oh, you don't let him sniff? You don't like him to sniff? And I'm like, no, I don't. And she said, oh, well, you that's not very good to do at the farmer's market because if a dog comes up, they need to be social. And I said, well, I make sure that they don't get that close. And here is why, just so you guys know why. Did you know that when you have a dog on a, two dogs on a leash that are greeting each other, especially strangers, but it can even happen with dogs who know each other. But when they're both on a leash, they feel confined and there's no way for them to go anywhere, right? And so that is like the most, I think, the most volatile way to introduce dogs to each other is when they're on a leash. Now, whether Caesar Milano would agree with me, I don't know, but Caesar wasn't there. So I said, nope, I don't do it. A little bit later, I was proven out, I'm just saying. We had a dog who Wayne thought was very cute, and he had the gall, the unmitigated gall. I say it was unmitigated because there was no mitigating the gall. <sighs> to pet that dog right in front of Finn. And Finn, my sweet and wonderful Aussie, growled. And I don't mean like play growling, I mean like get away from my dad growling and I mean it like right now growling and I said oh <laughs> uh, excuse me for my dog's semi-aggression but it was uh he was straight up there was no way around the fact that he was not a happy camper the dad was petting another dog you know it was the classic you've been with another dog situation so <laughs> we're like okay then I could feel it in the leash. Wayne could hear it. <laughs> I, I'm not even sure. I don't know if the owner of the other dog even noticed it, but we certainly did. We were a little surprised. Okay, that's all the leaves I'm going to put there. And now I'm just going to take some of my liquid glue. Yes, he was very jealous. He was not at all happy with Dad giving any kind of love to anybody else at all. Um... But it was a fun day, and there was a lot more people. We'd gone, oh, a couple, oh gosh, a couple, maybe a month or so ago, two months. And the combination of being still in winter and everybody still worried about COVID, um, there wasn't much to see or do. 
and it was kind of actually, one could even say boring, but today was not boring, it was fun. There was lots of things there. People had pottery, and there was a whole booth with dog treats, tons of vegetables already out, which I think is amazing and smart and wonderful. So now I'm just, um, I'm just gluing tendrils in, and I'm using all the colors, because I, I liked how that looked. Um, I thought that was kind of fun. I like the, the kind of contrast between the crumb cake and the, um, and the brighter colors of these in colors. And I'm even using, now see, if you get one that's a little too long, you can just snip an end and use the shorter version and you'll be fine. And you just keep doing that until you're so sick of putting in tendrils that you can hardly stand yourself anymore. And then when you get to that point, you stop. See? That's how that works. That is how that works. Now let's see, I need another, I really, I am surprised at how much I like polished pink, y'all. Because it is way out of my wheelhouse. I mean, it really is. Like, I am not a huge fan, for those of you who love Magenta Madness, again, it's kind of like the, the wine, more Magenta Madness for you, but I, I'm not a huge fan, so I was surprised at how much I really do like Polished Pink. It's very pretty. Chester is a wannabe, there you go, smartest cat, cat dog, he's a cat dog. There you go, I like it. All right, so we'll just keep doing that for a minute. And I'm going to just bore you to death with this because I want this to be so beautiful and so beautiful. And you can use your little tweezers to, to pick them up and stick them down in there however you like. See, I think I want another papaya up here on the top. It's actually kind of fun because I can actually see, we're like watching a grapevine grow, right? I mean, how fun. Who else gets to make a grape grapevine grow? I feel a song coming on. No, I'll I'll spare you. I'll spare you. Nope, I gotta sing it. Who can make the grapes grow? Oh no, sorry. Okay. All right. Let's see. What else do I need? Oh, I need something right down here. So let's go with another um, pale papaya. And I'm going to cut off a little tippy do and put it in. And I'm going to save a few because I'm going to need some under my sentiment. It'll take way less time because it's way less big. All right, we'll leave that for now until we see how it's going. Don't like rosé wine either. There you go. All right, now I'm going to take some of the pale papaya and white half-inch woven ribbon. And I'm going to cut two lengths equally sized lengths, equally length lengths, if you will. And we're going to use a little seal to put those in place. Like so, and we're just going to kind of put them right in the center and they're going to have kind of a kind of a cross, not not a real strong cross like not a real deep cross like that kind of just an easy cross okay now i'm gonna make a bow it's like a double loop linen bow but it's a single loop linen bow okay same concept exactly the same concept we're going to hold the linen thread between our thumb and our forefinger and we're going to wrap around four times so one two three and four. Now, as you remember, if this was a double loop ribbon, now we would go, or bow, we would go around our, our two fingers four times. But with this one, I'm gonna stop right there and cut it off. And then I'm going to, just the same as with the double loop, I'm gonna push the sides together and twist to make a figure eight. Use my third hand here, i.e. my reverse tweezers cut off another little length and tie that to create a bow. Did y'all catch that? Yep, Karen, it is way better, I think, than fast fuse. Much easier to use. Much easier. All right. Now, the only trick here is to not 
tie the knot to not knot your tweezers into your knot. There we go. Now we're gonna just kind of put these where we want them. In the same way that your card is just made out of cardstock, so kind of make it do what you want. Your bow is made out of linen thread, which is like the world's easiest thing to deal with. So make it do what you need it to do, right? We're gonna pull these little ends down here and we're gonna ferrofaucetize the loops a little bit. Like that. She says with hope in her voice all right now I'm going to use one of those glue dots that I went and bought today I know I don't know I haven't heard hide nor hair from Billy for a long time I know she quit stamping up but she kind of just disappeared so all right I'm gonna put that right there with a glue dot like that now, I made a sentiment, and here is what I did. I stamped You're So Sweet, which is from Forever Grapevine in Evening Evergreen on Crumb Cake. Then I inked this small vine image with soft succulent, and I stamped it off and then stamped it over the top. Then I cut it with the matching die handily in the grapevine die set. And then I used my Evening Evergreen Stampin' Right marker to edge around it. Okay, very, very simple. Now I'm going to just pop that in the center of the card with the little bow off on the side. And I'll put my dimensionals on my card base because that's easier when you're trying to work around a bow. And I may decide that I need a double stack, but I don't think so. The uh, bow is a little bit thinner when you've only got a single bow, single loop, right? Makes sense, lots less thread involved there. So that's an advantage to doing a single loop bow and you still get some pretty good ferrofauceting. I mean, really you do, all right? And then we're going to put that like that. But I think I'm gonna leave it off a second and put my other decoration. Now, remember I made extras of these, so I'm gonna cut part of it like so. And then I'm gonna cut this right here. This is all the fussy cutting you have to do in the whole thing, okay? And I'm going to tuck this like right in here, actually under my bow, okay? And I'll just use a glue dot. Except you want to be sure it's not off of your card base, card front, like that was. Note to self, don't, and don't you guys either, don't take your dimensional covers off quite as quick as I did, okay? Just throwing that out there for your edification and your use. All right, and then we'll do the same with another glue dot for this other little piece that I cut. And let it stick out the top like that okay now put that dimensional back on yum blackberries off of the is there a problem with the stamping up glue dots nope i just ran out last night and as you are very well aware there is no possible way to get dimensionals from utah to atlanta on saturday before a video so i had to I had to compromise my beliefs and hit Michael's today and get me some glue dots. All right, so there we go. Then you can kind of just arrange your bow. And for those of you looking at the, your watches going, my gosh, she's going to be here all night. The good news is the rest of the card is much more faster than this one much more faster and then you can play with that now i took showing my love my newfound love for polished pink i took some polished pink gems from the 2021 2023 in color gems jewels and i put them around 
my collage. Because I think they're pretty. They're so pretty. Okay, and then I'm going to put a large one on the sentiment. And you can put more if you want. I want. I now officially want. All right. Yeah, let's see. I think I'll put one right there. What are those? Those are little dimensional covers, I guess. All right, here we go. Come on now. There we go. And that is our card front. I will go ahead and put it on a pale papaya mat. Yes, I probably should have done this earlier. Don't be like me. After you do your sponging, so you stamp, you color, you emboss, you sponge, then you can go ahead and mount it on your card base or on your mat, sorry. I'm glad you're liking it, Daryl. Or actually, I guess what you said is you're glad I'm using this set, not that you are loving it. So maybe it's like, oh, I'm so glad she's using this set. I hate this card so much, I'm never making it. Maybe that's what you're thinking. I don't know. Okay, so there's that. Now we'll put this aside for just a second and we'll make us our inner liner, which is another piece of um, crumb cake. And I am going to stamp a second sentiment. It's the thank you for the beautiful ways you've touched my life, which I think is an awesome sentiment. I really do like it a lot. And I'm going to use it in Evening Evergreen. Glad you guys are liking it. Okay. Remember my tip when you are using a cling stamp, whether you've used it a thousand times, if you haven't used it today, I recommend that you double check its alignment because what it's going to do is directly proportional to how well it's been etched on the rubber and two, how good a job you did putting that sticker on. And so what I just learned is if I line it up correctly, I will be happy with the result. So there's that. And then I'm going to take my small uh, single vine again, and I'm going to do it in stamped off once, soft succulent in each of the corners. each of the two corners, the opposite corners like that. And then I'm going to go do my pale papaya vintageizing, which I, could be like an oxymoron, I'm really not sure. But I like how it looks and so we're doing it. We're doing it. Isn't that the fun part of making a card? If you don't like how this looks, don't do it. If you do do it, do it. Wait, if you do like how it looks, do it. If you don't like how it looks, don't do it. Oh, good Lord. You know what I'm talking about, right? You're picking up what I'm putting down, right? All right. Okie doke. Yeah, this is a fun set. The die set is just gorgeous. I mean, straight up. Now we will mat this on pale papaya. And then the whole thing is in a um, crumb cake card base, which I happen to have right here, handy, ready to go. And then I'm gonna show you a fun little different thing I did on my envelope flap. And then we'll be done. Oh wait, I need to put a little, I think I'm gonna put another, uh, I really am loving <laughs> polished pink. I don't know why but I'm putting another gem up here. Don't let anybody ever tell you you can't put a gem on the inside of your card. That's just a lie. Who made that up? Who says? And then we'll dimensionalize the back of our card front. Will she have enough on that strip? Yes, woohoo! And we'll get to our envelope flap and we'll be done. Again, like I said on Thursday, I think we should do a study to see how long it takes every time we take away, we pull off our dimensional covers. It could be like a 
a time time efficiency study or something like that. Okay, there we go. And you know what? I'm going to put a glue dot right there because that one is bugging me the way it's sticking up. Glue dots work really good behind this shimmer vellum, just saying. Okay, because it really kind of disappears. You can disappear it pretty easy. All right, now, on my envelope, I'm going to stamp my single grapevine. It's my least favorite of the new in colors, but I really like it anyway. It's my. It's not the one I would go to pick every single time. Like if I had to go to a desert island, I could have one color. That wouldn't be it, but I do like it. All right, so I'm just gonna stamp that once on this envelope. Now, let me show you what I did on the envelope flap. I took a piece of very vanilla cardstock. I stamped my single um, vine all over it. And then I, can you see, I embossed it in the brick embossing folder. Now, on the sample, can you see the difference? On the sample, I embossed first and then stamped. So you can do either way. If you like kind of this rustic, more weathered look, you can stamp after you emboss. If you prefer a little crisper image, then stamp first and then emboss. Okay, so emboss, then stamp, stamp, then emboss. Two different looks, same exact technique. Just when did you do it? All right, and here we go. I'll just put a little bit of liquid glue on my envelope flap. And now you do want to use your regular very vanilla cardstock. Don't use thick. That would be too much for your envelope flap. Okay, too thick. So just use your regular basic very vanilla cardstock and cut it off just like it was a piece of designer paper. And you have a texturized designer paper envelope, okay? Now this is in lieu of, you've seen me occasionally run the envelope flap through in an embossing folder. I didn't do that for two reasons on here. First of all, I couldn't fit the envelope and the folder through the cutting machine in the correct orientation. The only way I could get it through would have been with the bricks going this way instead of this way, and I didn't want that. And two, I didn't want to distort my envelope flap. And three, I just thought this was cool, okay? All right, so there you go. Two cards. This is the Forever Grapevine um, bundle. And I uh, hope you liked it, and I hope you will get it and think about adding it to your stash. Don't forget, next week on the 1st is the big DSP sale, 15% off. And it looked to me like it was darn near every DSP except the specialties, okay? So the uh, Expressions in Ink specialty paper is not, and the, um, oh goodness, I just lost it. Well, there's one other that's not on the list. There's two. So you'll find them. But, oh, oh, Simply Elegant. Sorry. Simply Elegant and Expressions in Ink are not in the uh, sale. But everything else is 15% off. So I hope you are making your list and getting ready to go. All right, guys. Thank you so much. I appreciate you spending, oh, a little much, too much time, 40 minutes with me today on Saturday. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. And hopefully I'll see you on Thursday for my YouTube live. Thanks. Ta.